the time and you came back you said to about 20 people some of yep. them you've never seen before that's right in, in my house i went out uh, i had to go to preston um, to help my father with a job came back and the house was full of people friends and there's people here that I'd, I'd seen through the village and uh, to the point i have two labradors one young lady said can i take your dogs for a walk well, I didn't see them for three days. She looked after them for three days because they couldn't come home. I mean, if we, if we walk through the house, David, yeah. we're going from, from front to back. Obviously, we're on concrete floors now. You've got an old flag floor in there, and we see the chairs with your sofa and your suite perched on chairs to get them out of the water. That's right. We, we, we thought at one stage, right, we've got to salvage as much as we possibly can. So we took everything upstairs, which we physically could, and anything that had to stay downstairs, we, we lifted onto so like wooden chairs, and, that type of thing. And the kitchen chairs. Where, where did you ensure? Done now. Well, the coming out tomorrow, the lots of justice coming out tomorrow. As far as the contents, we're living in a flood area. We've got a big excess to pay for content damage. It's thousands of pounds excess you're facing, isn't it? So you've done oh, thousands yes. of pounds cost to you. This is that's right. It's going to be. It is. Well, the excess is five thousand pounds on the insurance, so that's that's going to be found from somewhere. I mean, just walking here, you've got a mop here. You've got buckets here, cement stuff. Going through into your kitchen, you get more mops. You've got bureaus on the kitchen table. Um, yeah, when do you envisage moving back in? Well, I've been told the actual uh, structural wise is going to take two or three months to dry out. Why well, haven't uh, you got deep humidifiers in now? Um, You're speaking to a woman of experience. <laughs> That's what we've got to organise for tomorrow. You know, we've had the heating on. The heating still does actually work to a degree. And so we've had the heating on and all the doors open trying to, to help it along. Do you think you'd have to take the plaster off and yes, redo the walls? Definitely. Yeah, the plaster will have to come off. I had a builder came in and on Saturday. The situation, as far as he's concerned, is you know at least a, a, a metre of plaster all the way around at the bottom has to come out and obviously all the electrics have been affected downstairs as well so it's all the hidden work that yes. people don't realize what's affected yeah. in a I mean, it's not just the fact that we've got type marks all around the, the different rooms we're it's not talking about cleaning up in a tartar are we not in this one no i mean it's even come through the ceiling in the kitchen as you can see in that corner we've got quite a lot of structural damage so that doesn't take five minutes is it to to rectify itself month. David Jackson in Croston waiting on the final word on insurance status and those who have been affected the last couple of days would have been a frantic time sorting out their insurance policies. Um, someone like the insurance firms take the strain or you might think of getting your own loss assessor. Jeff Williams is one of those based at Cherry and Griffiths, a company based here in Lancashire. Jeff, just let's get this straight. Loss assessors work for the householders, the policy holder. A loss adjuster works for an insurance company. Well, that's, uh, that's generally correct, yes, sir. Uh... I imagine I lost it just to myself, but uh, I swapped sides about 15, 16 years ago. Oh, and defected. Uh, working for policy. It's defected. So you, you know the insurance business inside out? Um, I, I believe I do, yes. So listening to David there, you know, he faces a five grand excess on his contents, lives in a flood area. You know, his story would not would be a common one for you, wouldn't it? Uh, it would, yes. Um, obviously the £5,000 excess doesn't come into play unless somebody lives in the flood area, but uh, I was just listening to what David was saying and... Um, to the right things at, uh, at, uh, at the present time and uh, I think you've picked up on uh, a couple of good points uh, with regard to it's the hidden damage and not necessarily what you can see that uh, yeah, that's where really there's a potential problem. As I drove place. into Crossing yesterday I saw vans belonging to one company called Rainbow which are based here in Lancashire mm. that do all immediate recovery work you know it sent shudders down my spine having been through it uh, Jeff it, it is, it, it's, it's a horrendous time for those affected isn't it? Absolutely it is yeah it's, uh, it is. I mean it's stressful I think life's stressful in any event, but uh, when this sort of happens, uh, you know, it's, it's just total stress. People are totally outside their, um, you know, uh, comfort zones. Um. I know when we took on a, you know, a, a loss, a, a loss assessor, they become like an agony uncle, really, Jeff. I mean, you know, you must be going through a busy period at the moment with what happened at the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, people out over the weekend trying to help people, but uh, we do understand that people want to see their issues, deal with matters before they come to us. But uh, ultimately, when people come to us, we uh, we take a lot of stress out of the situation and let them get on with their lives or rebuilding the business or you know, so like domestic operations. Why so, will people bring you in? What are the benefits of having having an assessor rather than let the insurance firm sort it out? But first of all, as I've just mentioned, uh, you, you, you know, you get rid of all the stress. Uh, well, not all the stress, obviously, but we can deal with the insurers. If we're talking about domestic claims, I think the claims, um, nuclear claims situation has become a, a one of supply chain management where the uh, insurers and losses just to just press buttons and end up dealing with loads of different people. I met one person a week after his fine. He'd already spoken to 11 different people, believe it or not. So you take the strain, you just become one point of contact and you then do all the negotiation with the insurance firms? Yeah, we, we become one point of contact and we do all the negotiation and we, we, we try to help people get things arranged as well. Okay.
the advice then for those affected, Jeff? Um, so the advice for those affected by all is wait until you see how your insurers, how your insurers deal with the matter before uh, before we can for help. But uh, my uh, what advice can I give? I think the advice would be go to uh, what do sorry cry. That's what I did a lot of. Well, I, I think I think as far as David is concerned, we do have most people moving uh, contents out of his house and trying to solve them. I do hope that uh, have real good rules on because. Uh, yeah, and something to bear in mind. I think the, uh, you know, the, the, the thing you've got to leave it to the experts to get your property dry and then, um, then take stock of the situation at that time. By that time you'll have calmed down a bit and you can decide whether the insurers are in fact looking after you or whether you need some, uh, some assistance. All right, Jeff Williams, thanks for joining us. He is a loss assessor based at one company in Lancashire, uh, Cherry and Griffiths, which helps people affected in times like this. Oh, it just brings back horrendous memories. Commiserations to all those affected by the floods over the weekend. 17 minutes past eight. Let's